Hi, this is Kevin for SonyVert.com. One of the most powerful features of a Sony Asset Pro are the effects that you can use on your tracks. But you're not getting the full benefit of those effects and plugins until you start using the automation or envelope feature in Asset Pro. What I've got here to demonstrate the automation process is a very simple setup where I'm going to use the number one and the number four track EQs the high shelf and the low shelf EQ to control the bass and the treble. I've sw switched off number two and number three and I've already set up the automation on the track so you can hear the effects of the changing EQs. Now if I put the setting on autom automation read we should be able to play and hear what the effect is. Now that was the original track that you heard at the beginning and it should have had slightly different slightly different feel, slightly different accents to it. And what I can do is to if I press down on one of these nodes here, I can change the sound of the treble for instance and just generally make alterations until I get the kind of effect that I want. And again with the bass I can move the nodes around. If I hold down shift I can move the node around in any direction and if I hold down ALT the function, the way that the nodes move around changes. So what you want to do is to use the CTRL, SHIFT and ALT key when you're, when you're moving those nodes around and uh, that will give you a feel as to what's possible. The other thing you can do is to right click on one of the lines, one of the transitions and if you right click you should find that you can get different types of transition which can really alter the final feel of the transition. Now the example that I've got here is a bit extreme. You'd probably not use track EQs and automation in this way in any sort of real life situation. But I think this setup is pretty good for demonstrating what's, what's uh, possible using automation. It demonstrates the power of automation. But how do you actually set it up? If you right click here and choose FX Automation, you'll get a list of items that are known as the automatable parameters. Now these are just the parameters for the track EQs. As you can see there are a lot of them and part of the art of using these automatable parameters is to choose the right ones. Now I can actually switch off the enable and disable ones and just leave track 1 gain and track 4 gain and it's possible to use just the gain to turn the effect on and off and the way that we do this is basically if we change the decibels to 0 that has the effect of turning the effect off but th how do we actually do it here if I press down shift and click on one of the lines that introduces a node and I can do that a second time and what, can, what I can do is to take the rightmost node and to move it left as far as it will go and then double click and that line will now be at zero decibels the effect will actually be turned off and I can do exactly the same with the bass I can double click and that brings the line up to zero effectively turning that particular effect off but it's not just track EQs and other filters that we can use. I can drop into the track G snap which is a type of auto tune if you've not used that before and uh, we can actually automate this particular VST plugin and the way to do that I'll go again to the track effects options and as you can see there we've got quite a lot of different items that we can automate. Uh, again it's all about picking the right parameters in this particular situation I'm going to choose the max frequency and the minimum frequency and hit OK. Now if I try to change the settings nothing actually happens they change and then they fall back to their positions. If I want to change them I've got to use the settings in the track itself. 
I've got to use the envelopes in the track itself. And what I've done there is to put it at its maximum settings. And as you can see, it sounds pretty horrible, but there is a stretch right in the middle that I think sounds okay. And I want to preserve the effect in that stretch. And as you can see here, there is no on or off button. So how do we turn the effect on and off? Well, that's quite simple. I know from using this particular plugin that the minimum frequency or the max frequency can essentially be used as on and off switches. And the way that that happens is that the minimum frequency has to be less than the maximum frequency, otherwise nothing is detected. So if I go up to the max frequency and just introduce a node there so that before the area where I want the effect to come into play, the max frequency is, is set very low. And again, after the area I want the effect to be active, I set the max frequency very low that will essentially switch off the effect more or less. Now, if I reverse that position with the minimum frequency so that the minimum frequency is very, very high in areas where I want the effect to be off, that will have the effect of switching off that particular VST plugin in every area except where the minimum is lower than the maximum. And then if I hit play, we'll actually be able to hear that it's limited in its effect. Now it's possible to alter some kind of setting in most plugins where it, you more or less switch the effect on or off by uh, changing those settings. So it's a good idea to get to know either the filters, the effects or the plugins very well before you try automating them. There is yet another feature which allows us a lot more control um, and uh, I'm going to demonstrate that now. What we were using there was the read feature. I'm going to use the right feature. I'm going to use the right touch feature. And the way that this works is very, very simple. We choose some setting that we want to control. If we now open up the plugin and effects control window, and if we now move around that particular parameter, it actually changes the track, the plugin or effects envelope in the track. This is powerful because it allows us to record whatever we want. By simply altering the parameters as we're playing back or even when we're recording, and once it's done, Sony cleans up that particular envelope and we can come and make our own changes to the envelope. The other thing that we can do is to alter several different settings all at the same time. and everything is faithfully recorded for whenever we want to play it back. Now there is yet another setting known as the automatic right latch and the best way to find out how that works is to give it a try. <laughs> 